Okay, today we're going to look at the moment of inertia for a uniform thin rod. <clears throat> so because I have a continuous object, we're going to have to do an integral. So the moment of inertia is going to be the integral of x squared times lambda dx. Now, this lambda value, because we have a uniform rod, is going to be the density times the cross-sectional area. Now, because it's a uniform thin rod, the density is going to be uniform and the cross-sectional area is going to be also uniform. So these are going to be constants in my integral. The other part of this is I'm going to have to go from the left end of the rod to the right end of the rod. Now, these consider the axis of rotation to be at x equals 0. So let's see how we set this problem up and solve it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a uniform thin rod and we're going to find the moment of inertia about this axis. One that's about a third, well, one that is um, a third the length, so L over 3. Okay. So how we set this up, we're going to do an integral, but we first need to identify the left end and the right end assuming that the axis of rotation is at x equals 0. So if this is x equals 0, this point to the left here is going to be negative L over 3. And this point over here is going to be 2 thirds L, so it's going to be x equals positive 2 L over 3. So I have my bounds now. Okay. So now I just need to set up my integral. So I'm going to integrate from negative L over 3 to 2L over 3 of x squared density times cross-sectional area. Remember, those are just constants, dx. So I'm going to move my constants out front, and I'm going to take my integral. So I have density times cross-sectional area times x cubed divided by 3 evaluated from negative L over 3 to 2L over 3. So I just need to, and this is all equal to i, I should say. So I just need to evaluate this. So I have i is equal to the density times cross-sectional area times, I have 2L over 3 quantity cubed divided by 3 plus, oops, minus, jumping ahead of myself there, negative L over 3 cubed divided by 3. You'll notice because it's a cube, these negatives are going to end up canceling. I'm going to factor out some common stuff here. So I have I is equal to density times cross-sectional area. There's an L cubed in common. There's also a 3 cubed divided by 3, so 3 to the fourth in common. And so all I'm left with is 2 cubed, which is 8, minus a negative 1, so plus 1. So 8 plus 1, 9. 9 is 3 squared, so that crosses out. But what you've seen is you've seen that the moment of inertia is typically taken the form of some fraction times ml squared. This doesn't look like that. So how do we rectify that? So how we do it is we want to get mass. Now, we know mass is equal to density times the volume. Now, for a thin rod, like this, to find the volume of that rod, I'm going to take the cross-sectional area times the length. So this, the mass, is equal to density times cross-sectional area times length. So when you solve one of these, you're always going to look for a PAL. You're looking for PAL, and we're going to substitute that in for mass. So here is my PAL. So I have I is equal to 3 squared, so 1 ninth mass, but I only used one of the L's in my PAL, so I still have an L squared. So I have 1 ninth ML squared. So this is the integral method for finding the moment of inertia. Now we're going to look at using the parallel axis theorem. So the parallel axis theorem states that the moment of inertia is equal to the moment of inertia of the center of mass plus MD squared, where D is the distance between my two axes of rotation. So we're going to try this one and see if we get the same answer, and we should. 
So the center of mass is right in the center of the rod at a distance of L over 2. Okay. So if I want to find the moment of inertia of this axis, which is parallel to an axis through the center of mass, I can simply look for this distance here, D. And D is going to be for us, well, a third plus what equals a half? A sixth, so L over 6. So I look up the moment of inertia of a rod through its center, so I is equal to 1 12th ML squared plus M times the distance between my two axes, which is L over 6 quantity squared. Factor out some common variables, so I have I is equal to 1 12th plus 1 6 squared is 36. ML squared. Find a common denominator, so 1 12th is 3 36. 3 36 plus 1 36 is 4 36 or 1 9th ML squared. So you can go ahead and solve these problems either using the integral method or the um, parallel axis theorem. Be sure though, if they ask you to use integral methods, that you do the integral methods. Don't just do the um, parallel axis theorem, but you're welcome to use this to check yourself.